aware of who two-year-old Kaylee Anthony was. The majority will know that she sadly passed away at some point between 1 p.m. and 8 p.m. on June 16, 2008. Her death is undoubtedly the most heartbreaking part of this story, and we only need a single word to epitomize her short life. Tragic. But the primary subject of this video is not about the life nor the death of Kaylee Marie Anthony. It is in fact about the psychological constitution of her mother, 22-year-old Casey Marie Anthony. So rather than tragic, you'll find the words disturbing and perplexing to be far better suited to the theme of this video. One of the many reasons this case is exceptional is how the present day's topic of discussion has little to do with the actual occurrences of the crime, but in fact the subsequent developments that followed. People are no longer talking about how or even why Kaylee Anthony passed away. They are instead talking about the manner in which a mother responded to her daughter's death. Given all the acquired information we now have, even if we afford this person the most morally acceptable possibility of what occurred, her manner of conduct was still unimaginably cold-blooded. This is driven home by the fact she was evaluated by two clinical psychologists during her time. Oh wait, I see a raid. It's Danny Baby 96 viewer raid. Hey, appreciate the host. Driven home by the fact she was evaluated by two clinical psychologists during her time in custody, and not a single abnormality was discovered with relation to her psychological state. In other words, there were no signs of mental illness whatsoever. And this makes the character study of Casey Anthony just as fascinating as it is terrifying. A human being's state of mind is something most accurately assessed with the full capacity of hindsight. So before we evaluate our first segment of raw footage, here's a quick rundown of each of the essential moments that will give you a broader understanding of what we're actually dealing with. On the 15th of July, 2008, Orlando police received a call from Cindy Anthony, the grandmother of the victim. 911, what's your emergency? I called a little bit ago, the deputy sheriff. I found out my granddaughter has been taken. She has been missing for a month. We're talking about a three-year-old little girl. My daughter finally admitted that the baby's in the store. I need to find her. Your daughter admitted that your ba the baby is where? The babysitter took her a month ago. My daughter's been looking for her. I told you my daughter was missing for a month. I just found her today, but I can't find my granddaughter. And she just admitted to me that she's been trying to find her herself. Did she just say a month? A month? There's no explanation for that. Like, there's none. If something happened, you would have gone to the police. You wouldn't, like, by yourself be looking for your daughter. That's literally psycho- That makes me think that this Cindy woman is in on it too. Because how would you even buy that? Just admit it to me that she's been trying to find her herself. There's something wrong. I found my daughter's car today, and it smells like there's been a dead body in the damn car. Okay, what is the three-year-old's name? Kaylee. C-A-Y-L-E-E. -E, Anthony. Kaylee Anthony? Yes. How long Wait a second. This guy just wrote in the chat, subtitles, please. C A Y L E E. You're getting banded. Anthony. Haley Anthony? Yeah. He's deaf? The fact that anyone's saying he's deaf, he's blind, anyone who's saying anything right now, the joke was that there's literally words on the screen right now. That's the joke. The fact that anyone has a response to that my mind is literally fucking blown. I I literally want to end stream. I want to ban everybody. How are you putting reddits to that? He's colorblind. How long has she been missing for? 
I have not seen her since the 7th of June. Is your daughter there? Yeah. Can I speak with her? Okay, Santa's here. They want to talk to you. Hello? Hello? Hi, Santa. Hi, Santa. Hi, Santa. Yes. Can you tell me what's going on a little bit? I'm sorry? Can you tell me a little bit what's going on? My daughter's been missing for the last 31 days. And you know who has her? I know who has her. I've tried to contact her. I actually received a phone call today now from a number that is no longer in service. I did get to speak to my daughter for about a moment, about a minute. Who has her? Do you have a name? Her name is Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez. To give some context to this bizarre phone call, Casey Anthony had left the family home with her daughter a month earlier, stating that she had a work assignment in Tampa and would be traveling the entire time. Kaylee's grandparents would ask repeatedly over the following month to see, or at least speak to their granddaughter, but Casey claimed each and every time that she was too busy with work and that Kaylee was with a nanny who went by the name Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez, or Zanny for short. On July 15th, exactly six weeks after Kaylee was last seen... All right, get a poll. Subtitles on or off. I need the poll now. Kaylee was with a nanny who went by the name Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez, or Zanny for short. On July 15th, exactly six weeks after Kaylee was last seen by her grandparents, George Anthony received a phone call that the family car was at the impound lot. This immediately alerted suspicion, as it was the same car Casey had supposedly been traveling with for work. Suspicion turned into panic once they picked up the vehicle, and George discovered a strong odor emanating from the trunk, one that he recognized from his years as a police officer, and found comparable to that of human decomposition. Through contacting one of Casey's friends, her parents managed to track her down at her boyfriend's house in Orlando, where they were found smoking marijuana and watching TV. When inquired over the whereabouts of her daughter, Casey stated that she had been kidnapped 31 days before by the supposed babysitter. It was at that moment Cindy Anthony called 911. 911, what's your emergency? <laughs> Who has her? Do you have a name? Her name is Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez. Who is that? Babysitter? She's, she's been my nanny for about a year and a half, almost two years. Why are you calling now? Why didn't you call 31 days ago? I've been looking for her and have gone through other resources to try to find her, which is stupid. I think the officers are here. The officers are there? Yes. Now let's indulge in the world of fantasy for just a moment and pretend all of what Casey had just stated was true. She had indeed been working, and her daughter was in fact kidnapped by the babysitter a month earlier. The immediate premise most would gather would be that Casey had no regard for her daughter whatsoever. In the 911 call, there was no urgency nor concern in her voice, and rather than her volunteering information, which most parents would do in a frantic manner, it had to be acquired by the dispatcher through repeated inquisition. All you have to do is compare Casey's dialogue to that of her mother's in the same phone call. One was indifferent, while the other was distraught. Police would have picked up on this immediately. Even without the bizarre phone call, the circumstances alone would make Casey the prime suspect in her daughter's disappearance. She was immediately interviewed as a witness, which unbeknownst to her, was the detective's first step in locking her into as many lies as possible. The date right now is July 16, 2008. The time right now is 04, 11 hours. I'm Detective Mellish with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. I am with Casey Anthony, is that correct? Yes. Casey, you understand this is being recorded? Yes. you have any objection to that? No. All right. Casey, I got called here in, um, in reference to a missing child. You took Casey to a babysitter's house? Yes. And who was this babysitter? Her name is Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez. Okay. How long had you known Zenaida? Almost four years. It'll be four years Christmas this year. And where did you meet her? Who did you meet her through? A mutual friend. His name is Jeffrey Michael Hopkins. I met him at... Nickelodeon at Universal, and I met her through him. She was his son's nanny at the time. Does Jeffrey still work at uh, Universal? No, he does not. How long has it been since he left? About nine, ten months, give or take. He moved up to North Carolina for a short time and moved down to Jacksonville within the last three months. How would you characterize your relationship with Miss Anthony? <clears throat> More or less acquaintances. Weren't very good friends? Not very good friends. Did you ever work at Universal Studios? I did. When did you work at Universal <clears throat> Studios? Approximately 2002. 
How long did you work there for? One year. Did you ever work there at the same time that Casey Anthony worked there? I don't think so. You don't recall ever seeing her there? Never. Did you ever introduce Casey Anthony to a woman by the name of Zenaida Gonzalez? I did not. Did you ever use Zenaida Gonzalez as, as a nanny? No, sir. Do you have any children? No, sir. Uh, have you lived in the Orlando area consistently since 2002? Yes, sir. Have you ever lived in Jacksonville? No, sir. Have you ever lived in North Carolina? No, sir. Did you see Casey Anthony in the month of June of 2008? No, sir. When was the last time you spoke with him? About a week and a half ago. Do you know a telephone number for him? I can find a number for him. I don't know a number offhand. No, I do not. So you met Zenaida through Jeffrey Hopkins? I did. And yes. his son Zach Hopkins, I guess, Zenaida used to watch over Zach? Yes. And when did she start watching over your child? It's been within the last year and a half, two years, that she started watching Kaylee. How would you normally drop off, or how would you normally do the exchange with your child and Zenaida? Would you drop the child off? Would she meet you somewhere? I would usually drop her off for yes. a few months. We would go over to Jeff's house. He lived over in Avalon Park. And you would go to Jeff's house why? To drop off Kaylee. That's where Zenaida would go to watch both of the kids. Okay. It was in a nice centralized area. He had a decent sized house. It was good room for the two of them. Go back to your statement. You dropped off Kaylee June 9th and walk me through. You dropped her off to go to work? Mm-hmm. Okay. Get off of work and go from there. I got off of work, left Universal, driving back to pick up Kaylee like a normal day. And I show up to the apartment, knock on the door, nobody answers. So I call Zenaida's cell phone and it's out of service. I didn't really want to come home. I wasn't sure what I'd say about not knowing where Kaylee was. Still hoping that I would get a call or, you know, find out that Kaylee was coming back so that I could go get her. And I ended up going to my boyfriend Anthony's house. He lives in Sutton Place. Did you talk to Anthony about uh, what happened with Kaylee? No, I did not. And you talked to... Bro. This is your daughter. You go to where you dropped her off. Nobody's there. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's fine. I'll go to my boyfriend's house. Did you talk to him about it? Nah. Oh, okay. Like, even if you're, like, the most psychotic person ever, like, if you're... Like, even if you don't even like your kid, you would still, like, say something. Like, this... This is what I don't understand. Like, the other video we watched, too. Like, do these... Like, how... Like, if you're gonna do some crazy shit, you would at least think that they would think of a believable story. You know? And the fact that she had 31 days to think of this story, and this is what she came up with... This is just like, this is just like, this is just sad, bro. This is just fucked up. Anyone about Kaylee, about your answer to Kaylee? Or the Outside fact that she's missing? Outside of a couple people, a couple mutual friends. Who did you talk to about um, it? I talked to Jeff, Jeffrey Hopkins. Mm -hmm. I talked to Juliette Lewis. She's one of my coworkers at Universal. She works, you still work at Universal? Yes. What the, What do you do at Universal? I'm an event coordinator. Okay, what is Juliet, what position is she, where is she works? She's also an event coordinator. We work in the same department. Juliet Lewis doesn't exist. Casey had briefly worked at Universal, but hadn't been employed there for over two years prior to this interview. And she wasn't an event coordinator. She stood behind a kiosk and sold photos of people after they had been on the Incredible Hulk ride. You have a number for Juliet? Oh, offhand, I can't think of one. Is she in your SIM card? No, she's not. Some of the more recent numbers, her number just changed because she just moved back up north. She, within the last two months, has finished moving up to New York. She's so, subleasing her apartment. So Julia doesn't work stuff. at the Universal anymore? No, she does not. What's the reason, uh, I asked you this before and I'll ask you just for the record, what's the reason you didn't call the police before? I think part of me was naive enough to think that I could handle this myself, which obviously I, I couldn't. And... I was scared that something would happen to her if I did notify the authorities or got the media involved. Just fear of the unknown, fear of the potential of Kaylee getting hurt, of not seeing my daughter again. 
I asked you this at the onset and I asked you before we went on tape, and I'll ask you again just to make sure we're clear. Is there anything about this story that you're telling me that is untrue? Or no. is there anything that you want to change or divert from what you've already told me? No, sir. Did you cause any injury to your child, Kaylee? No, sir. Did you hurt Kaylee or leave her somewhere and you're no. worried that if we find that out that people are going to look at you the wrong way? No, sir. And you're telling me that Zenaida took your child without your permission and She's hasn't returned her? the last person that I've seen with my daughter, yes. Is she Puerto Rican? Is she Dominican? Is she white? She's mixed. She's black and Puerto Rican. Is there any underlying cause to why Zenaida would have taken your child? Nothing that... Did she ever make any statements to you about... Only how much she loves Kaylee and how great of a kid she is. And when you talk to Jeffrey afterwards, I'm assuming that Jeffrey's child is still with him. His child is still with him. You said Zenaida had family up in uh, New England, up in New York, or yes, something? Yes, she has family down south. Her mother and her sister, um, her brother's in New York. She's originally from New York. Pretty much grew up there, moved down here, went to the University of Florida. Zenaida, the nanny, doesn't exist. Casey never had a babysitter. Being the retrospective viewer, we have the benefit of knowing these are outright fabrications, and these meticulous details are a textbook sign of a pathological liar. She speaks eloquently and naturally as if her dialogue is a reflex response to the questions she's being asked, when in reality, each of these minor details are calculated and deliberately placed for the purpose of deception, and the nonchalant, easy-going tone she employs is used to camouflage anxiety. Casey has not only become accustomed to manipulation, she has become extremely skilled in how to use it effectively. It takes us to the concept of nurture and how it most likely had a significant impact on her current circumstances. If we go through what we know about Casey's domestic history, there are numerous occasions where she had gotten away with things that most would not, simply due to the fact that she was able to continuously lie without conscience. A prime example could be when she was 18 years old and stopped attending class midway through her senior year. She literally skipped the entire second half of her final year to go hang out with her older boyfriend. Her parents became suspicious on several occasions, yet each and every time, Casey had some whimsical excuse to which she was given the benefit of the doubt. Then just days before graduation, her parents were informed by the school of her truancy and that she would not be graduating. When confronted, Casey's excuse was that her timetable was mixed up by the school, causing her to miss classes through no fault of her own. This is obviously a completely baffling excuse that no sane person would ever believe. Yet whether it be through denial or an overprotective nature, Casey's parents not only took her at her word, but even shielded her from the consequences of her actions. They lied to all their family friends that she graduated with honors and even threw her an extravagant graduation party the day after. This is just one of the many occurrences where Casey faced no ramifications for misconduct. It seemed to give her the belief that no matter what she did, as long as she could spin one lie after another, or at least drag a lie out for as long as possible, everything would work itself out. The truth is that everything did work itself out when she was dealing with her parents, and she evidently thought the same rules applied with regard to national law and a missing child's investigation. After the initial statement you just heard, Casey was asked if she could take police to all places of interest. She happily obliged, and then proceeded to lead them to a multitude of fake addresses which she had nothing to do with. She then took them to her supposed office at Universal Studios and literally led three senior investigators to the very end of the building, taking over 25 minutes to walk to, before she finally turned around, put her hands in her back pockets, laughed, and admitted that she didn't work there. Completely dumbfounded, the detectives placed her under arrest and took her to a conference room in the building for what was essentially an interrogation. Since I left you this morning, mm -hmm. I've gone to every address that you've told me. I came over here, I've already talked to all the employees. Mm -hmm. I found out all these names that you're giving me are people that either never worked here or have been fired here for a long time ago. Okay, so where we are right now is in a position that doesn't look very good for you. Because obviously I know, and you know, that everything you told me is a lie, correct? Not everything that I told you. Pretty much everything that you've told me, including where Kaylee is right now. That I still, I don't know where she is. Sure you do. And here, here's, I absolutely listen, do let me, not let me, know where she let me, is. Let me explain something. Looking at you, I know that everything that you've told me is a lie. I am very confident, just by having talked to you the short period of time, that you know where she is. I legitimately have not seen my daughter in five weeks. I didn't let anything happen to her, except I trusted her with somebody. Somebody that had been taking care of her, that had been taking good care of her. 
someone that she was comfortable with, that I was comfortable what about, with. What about Jeff? You said Jeff worked here about until about two months ago? No, he hasn't worked here for quite a ten while. Ten months? How long? It's been at least ten months. Okay. He got fired in 2002. Years. He hasn't been an employee here since 2002. <laughs> We've put a lot more together than I think you realize we put together. My question to you is we're in this office because our purpose in coming here was to do what? I'm trying to think of places no, where I, I know she's I, been. You're not answering my question. Do you want us to help? Yes, you want to help find your daughter? I do want you to Well, help. a good starting point would be to answer the questions, okay? If I say to you we're here because, and then you just ignore that, like I never asked it, and go off in some other direction, is that answering the question? No. Okay. Well, let's go through this again. We're here because. Because I lied. Because I brought you up here. And honestly, I was reaching for No, stop right avenue. there. I want you to tell me how lying to us is going to help us find your daughter. It's not going to. Well, then if the main thing you want to do is find your daughter, and you don't think lying to us is going to help us find her, why would you do that? Because I'm scared, and I'm, I know I'm running out of options. It's been a month. What are you scared of? I'm scared of not seeing my daughter ever again. I'm a parent, too. I would have been beside myself. I have been. I would have called the police immediately, and that's the part that I just don't understand. Well, we can, we've got so many resources out there that we could help on day one. You didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. At that point, I'm thinking, okay, they haven't been gone that long. Maybe I can find them. Maybe I can track them down. We're, we're not stupid, okay? And what you're doing right now is you're, you're treating us like we're stupid. Hey, look, he's playing. Look, a good cop over here, bad cop. He's like, so he's like being reasonable, and then this dude's like, look, I'm not fucking stupid. Yeah, classic, classic, classic tactics. But if she's like a pathological, psychotic liar, these shits are not going to work on her, though. You know? You can track them down. We're, we're not stupid, okay? And what you're doing right now is you're... Someone just said, it's not a movie. Hey, dumbass, do you know that that's a real thing, right? Like, this, this isn't like a movie made up thing, like, good cop, bad cop. This is a legitimate strategy that's used in the real li real life world. I know you're probably in a basement with Cheeto fingers right now. You don't understand the real world. That's a real thing in the real world. Someone ban, someone find him and ban that guy actually. Well, maybe I can find them. Maybe I can track them down. It's not ironic, okay? That's not ironic. I never have Cheeto fingers. Dorito fingers, sometimes. I will admit that. I'm not, I'll admit. Cheeto, never. We're not stupid, okay? And what you're doing right now is you... Well, maybe I can find them. Maybe I can track them down. We're, we're not stupid, okay? And what you're doing right now is you, you're, you're treating us like we're stupid. Everything that's coming out of your mouth is a lie. Everything. Either you gave Kaylee to someone and you don't want anyone to find out because you think you're a bad mom, or something happened to Kaylee and Kaylee's buried somewhere or in a trash can somewhere, and you had something to do with it. Either way, right now, it's not a very pretty picture to be painting. You're painting yourself as a very bad person. This needs to end. The truthful thing this is that I have not end. seen my daughter. The last time that I saw her was on the 9th of June. Remember we had those two people that we were talking about, the person who had an accident, and a person who's just a cold-blooded, callous monster? That's telling me that you are the second person, this cold-blooded, callous no. monster, who doesn't care and doesn't want to help because she's afraid that something so heinous happened that everyone's going to look at her and say, she's a monster, she deserves to go away, she deserves to never see the light of day, this bad thing should happen to her. I don't want to believe that right now, but you're going to give me no choice. Tell us what happened to Kaylee. Tell us what happened to I Kaylee. I dropped off Kaylee. And that's the last time that I've seen her. I dropped her Where off. Where did you drop her off? I dropped her off at that apartment. No, you didn't. That's exactly no, where I you dropped didn't. her off. Did you just think that one day she's just going to show up at your house? No. I sat around yesterday trying to figure out what to do. I'm glad that I ended up seeing my mom, that all of that stuff happened. It happened for a reason. Because You're glad you saw you. your mom. You could have saw your mom five weeks ago and said, Mom, I don't know what I that. saw my mom's reaction right off the bat, and it would have been the same from the get-go. So wait a minute, you're more afraid of your mom's reaction than you are if you ever see your daughter again? You know, I'm absolutely petrified. Absolutely petrified. I know my mom will never forgive me. I'm never going to forgive myself. Is it that there's some other thing more important in your life right now that you just weren't really focused on uh, what you were saying when you told us? So you kind of just accidentally told us you had an office here and we needed to be here? Or did you purposely mislead us? Which of those two is it? I purposely misled us. Okay, so you purposely misled us. 
This was all in an attempt to help find your daughter, right? That makes sense to you, correct? In a backward sort of way, yes. In a backward sort I'm of way. I'm coming back to places that are familiar to me that I know are familiar to her. Familiar situations that what did you think? just maybe How old is she? would help. She's almost three. She's, she's almost three. What do you think she's going to take a cab here? I mean, <laughs> what do you think she's going to get here? Because she's with someone else. She's with someone else who's hid her from you for five weeks. Yes. Why would a person who has hid your daughter from you for five weeks, okay, bring her to the building that you used to work at? I don't know what else to do anymore. If I knew where she was, if something well, would have happened, this. I would have admitted that do a long you think, time do ago. You think, do you believe thinking up more lies to tell us will help us? She's with someone that I absolutely do not trust, and that I'm absolutely scared. That, that you don't trust yet with babysitting your daughter for a year. I don't trust her now because of what happened. Who did you call first? Who did you go to for help first to help try to find her? No one. Oh, no one. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I'm glad we got that. Like, bro, at this point, like, if you're the cop, right? Like, you're the cop. How can you even, like... This is why I could never be like an official person, like, 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 like have like a position like that, because I would just straight up do some shit that's not allowed. I would like, dude, I, w I don't know what I would do. I'd start yelling shit. I mean, I'd probably start throwing shit. Uh, dude. I might take her. I might, dude, honestly, like if I'm being honest. If I think a, a, a mom or a dad, like, killed a daughter or a, or a child, right? Me as a cop, with my resources, I would probably take them somewhere, handcuff them to a chair in, like, a warehouse, and just beat them until they told me. Yeah, you can't do that as a cop. But that's what I'm saying. That's why I could never be a cop. Like, like the thought of, like, okay, you possibly literally killed your daughter like you you deserve to get this sh like i told you my idea is to have a martial arts expert at every police station who when a school shooter a rapist pedophile any of them come in for for questioning you send them into the room and then you just you have them handcuffed and you just let the martial arts dude beat the shit out of them uh, there's levels to it too. Like you could have two little martial arts guys. They like kind of karate chop you uh, Then you get like some big-ass like bodybuilder guy who just just straight up just punch you in the face uh, And then the torture which like I said You know doing some saw shit And like You do that until they like talk or just fuck it because they're a school shooter but like, dude, I just think they they treat like people who are like don't deserve it with too with too much respect. Like we saw that other video, that guy, that kid, a piece of fucking shit, literally murdered twenty people, and the guy's just talking to him like, "Hey, you want a water?" Right? No, you should be able to shut the camera off and just beat the shit out of him. How is that like a? Am I, am, is this so wrong? Like, am I so wrong on this? There's no justice, dude. There's no, 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 no. He's like, oh no, guilt, uh, uh, innocent till proven guilty. No, they had the kid on camera. He's a school shooter. Send the guys into the room with the hammers and torture him. All right, I, I can keep going on about this. Let's keep watching this. Oh, no, okay. I feel right. you, Lose. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm glad we got that straightened out. Casey was then taken to the county jail, where she, in the evening hours, was no, 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 able no. to. No, no, This guy just said, "You know your amendments." Hey, guess what? Fuck the amendments. Fuck them. If you're a school shooter. Let's go. 
Casey was then taken to the county jail where she in the evening hours was able to make a phone call and just happened to see her mother on the local news moments before speaking to her. Casey? Mom. Hey, sweetie. Oh, well, I just saw your nice little cameo on TV. Which one? What do you mean, which one? Which one? I did four different ones, and I don't know. I haven't seen them all. I've only seen one or two so far. You don't know what my involvement is in stuff? Casey. Mom. What? No. I don't know what your involvement is, sweetheart. You, you're not telling me where she's at. Because I don't f***ing know where she's at. Are you kidding me? Casey, don't waste your call. No. Don't waste me. my call sitting in the jail. But whose fault is you sitting in the jail? You're blaming me that you're sitting in the jail? Not Blame yourself fault. for telling lies. You mean it's not your fault? What do you mean it's not your fault, sweetheart? If you'd have told them the truth and not lied about everything, they wouldn't... Do me a favor. Just tell me what Tony's number is. I don't want to talk to you right now. Wow. Wow. So she's in jail. They're the interviewing the mom, and the mom's like, I don't know. I don't know. She might be involved. I don't. And then she calls the mom, cursing her out. It's kind of weird, like, hearing the mom talk, because it's almost like, you know, as a mom or a dad, like, how would you... How would you talk to your daughter or son and then and then you also think that they like did like this horrible crime? Like how would you how would you what would you do? Like what would you do? And I mean listen, if it's the mom, the mom knows that she's a liar. Right? But the, yeah, the mom is way too chill about it. She's calling her sweetheart. Yeah, she's being way too nice. <laughs> Do me a favor, just tell me what Tony's number is. I don't want to talk to you right now. I don't have his number. Um, we'll get it from Lee because I know Lee's at the house. Get Tony's number for me. Hey. Hey, can you give me Tony's number? I can do that. I don't know what real good it's going to do at this point. Well, I'd like to talk to him anyway. Okay. Because I called to talk to my mother and it's waste. Oh, by the way, I don't want any of you coming up here when I have my first hearing for Bond and everything else. Like, don't even waste your time coming up here you're making it real tough for anybody to want to try to i'm not going around and around with you that's pretty pointless christina would love to talk to you because she thinks that you will tell her what's going on frankly we're going to find out everything i have no telling them where kaylee, if i knew where kaylee was do you think any of this would be happening no anyway you only got a couple minutes for this so i'm not going to let you completely wait so here's christina she thinks she can get through no here. no i want tony's number i'm not talking to anybody else Hello. Hi, I'm glad everybody's at my house. Do me a favor, get my brother back because I need Tony's number. Do you, does Tony have anything to do with Kaylee? No, nothing. Okay, so why do you want to talk to Tony? He's my boyfriend, and I want to actually try to sit and talk to him because I didn't get a chance to talk to him earlier because I got arrested on whim today. I just want to talk to Tony and get a little bit of... Uh, Casey, uh, you have to tell me if you know anything about Kaylee. Sweetheart, if, if I happen to Kaylee, Casey, I'll die. You understand? I'll die. If anything oh, happens whoa. to that baby. Oh, my God. Calling you guys? A waste. Huge waste. Casey... What? Yo, yo. I mean, I mean, what do we expect? This is a murderer. Obviously. Um. But it's just like... This, this evidence, just like the behavior is so damning with no real evidence, but just like the fact that it's just weird. Like there is no physical evidence. We get it. Maybe there is at some point. I don't know. But just at this point, it's just like really just strange, weird behavior that anyone with rational sense would be like, okay, she's lying. She did something. But it, she's so insane, like. Oh my God, calling you guys? A waste, huge waste. Casey appeared in the court the next morning and was initially denied bail by the judge. He cited his reason as her undeniable disregard for the welfare of her own child. She was kept in protective custody and it would be nine days until she received her first visit from her parents. I love you. 
I love you too. Hi. <laughs> We've been seeing you sitting down. We we forgive anything that you've said. Oh, or I done. Hold on. Hold on. Can we turn the volume down? Yeah. Can, you can probably hear it. My head's gonna explode. <laughs> What's that T-shirt? I didn't get a chance to ask him. You know, other things. Kaylee's picture's on the back. Is it? Can Dad yes. show me the shirt? Yeah. Turn around so you, she can see. It's the hope, Never Lose Hope Foundation. Do you see it? I can see Your part picture? of it. Yeah. Have you seen me? And then it has the information on how to contact. Okay. Casey, you don't realize the whole United States is looking for our Kaylee. I know that, Mom. Her cover is going to be on People Magazine in a few days. With a readership of over 46 million adults in America, having your missing child on the front cover of People magazine would seem as a godsend to most. Yet Casey's response is almost as if it's a lost cause. Everybody is looking for her. Oh, good. Everybody is looking for her. Are we going to be able to find her, do you think? I hope we can, Mom. Now, I didn't get a chance to ask Lee. Um, can you look up a little bit more? Raise your eyes up a little bit. There you I go. So actually now, look straight up so I can look into your eyes, darling. Thank you. I need you know I need to do that. It's okay to cry, Casey. It's all right, love. We've all been crying. Setting aside morality and ethics for just a moment, Casey at this point would be emotionally exhausted. She had been sitting in an isolated jail cell for almost two weeks as the entire world was turning against her. Anyone in her position, guilty or otherwise, would be at near breaking point, and her composed exterior now finally slips. She, for a brief moment, allows herself to be vulnerable, and for perhaps the first time, expresses the pain of her situation. This is one of the few moments where Casey's true self is on display. Of itself, it's a touching moment between a mother and daughter, yet if we add in the context of the surrounding elements, she is only expressing this pain for herself. Just a moment ago, when she saw her deceased daughter's face on her father's shirt, none of this emotion came out. It lets us know that she does indeed have the personality type to get emotional, yet her empathy is clearly focused in one direction, which is inward toward herself. Casey, I want to ask you just a couple questions. God. <coughs> Los, are you faking sub alerts? Now, listen, I already, you guys know there's dumb comments in here all the time, right? They just are. It's the internet. Unfortunately, they allow anyone to be on the internet. But this guy goes, Los, are you faking sub alerts? The fact that I don't even know what you even mean by that is actually horrifying to me. Like, are you saying that like, that I'm like, I have fake accounts in the chat that are resubbing or something? Like, do you think salted hams who just sub for 32 months, you think that's me on a burner? Hey, All-Star, thanks for the uh, 33 months. Is that is that one of my alts? Did I just do that from my phone? What the hell does that mean? I'm actually being serious. And the guy who said this in the chat, his name is Your Vex. Okay? I want somebody wait and see his reply to this. I want to know what he means by this. Jay Whiteside, thanks for the 23 months. No, thanks for the 44 months. Your Vex, please, I'm begging you. Please tell me what you mean. He said, dun, 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 Los, are you? That's what I meant, yes. Yes, it is you. W. All right, hold this hour. That's an hour, bro. That's not even a 10 minute. That's an hour, bro. That's an hour, dude. That's an hour, bro. You stop talking, dude. Just stop talking. That just pissed me off. Holy shit. That doesn't even... Hey, can I show up my fake sub bot real quick? Hold on. We're getting too many subs. Hold on a second. Dude, stop. Oh, shit. All right, let's keep watching this. Self. Casey, I want to ask you just a couple questions. God. 
The rest of the visit is extremely bizarre. Casey's parents try to extract any information they can about Kaylee's possible whereabouts, and each time are essentially dismissed by Casey as if they're asking pointless and irritating questions. Do we have any pictures of Sandy's Mom, apartment? Ali and I already talked about this. I don't okay. know. It could right. be on, on the desk at home. I don't know. What is your... I can't get into your... Um, I gave Lee everything already. I all gave right. Lee all of the passwords, everything we could possibly think I wanna of get all over again. I want to get some video clips off Kaylee because the video clip with Grandpa is really helping people. Pic okay. Still pictures don't show No, they don't show justice. her personality. Right, and we need to show her personality, so I need to make sure we get that password. Yeah, I gave Lee the password. Please look up, sweetheart. I need to see your eyes. I want to be able to look at you guys, too. I can't look at you and look at the camera. Well, you don't have to look at the camera. Look at me. I'm looking at you. Okay. You're sitting very well. She's a, the, <laughs> mom, the, exchange. the mom doesn't understand that she's looking at the screen, which has her, but she's not, like, you can't look at both. It's okay. It's, a, it's an innocent mom, you know? Looking at you. Okay. You're sitting very low. <laughs> The exchange switches back and forth from inquisitive and challenging to sympathetic and loving, and every time her parents stop inquiring over the case and show that they still care about Casey herself is when the tears come out. Do you want to speak to your father now? Sure. <laughs> okay. Hey, gorgeous. How you doing? Oh, no. That's the pride. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Hey, gorgeous. How you doing? That's it. I didn't report my missing daughter for 31 days. Oh yeah, hey gorgeous. How you doing? This, this is why, she's a psycho. It, it always goes back to the parents. Sure. <laughs> okay. Hey gorgeous, how you doing? I look like hell. <laughs> well, you know something? You, you really need to keep your spirit high for all this. I have, I haven't been crying while I've been in here. Well, you know trying something? to read books and do other things to keep my mind off of stuff. Well, you know, I want to be able to reach out and hug you and give you the, the you know, the big, the big Papa Joe hug. But you know, I, 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 I we got to get that little girl back any way we can, and, we, and we're Dad, doing everything we can. My only concern, I gave Lee a statement. I want him to speak to whoever in the media, give them a statement specifically from me. He's going to give them an exact quote. Every time Casey's parents mention that people are willing to help with a search, Casey dismisses their credibility and even attacks some of their characters while she's at it. Tara? Tara from Michigan. You mean Mark's psycho ex-wife, Tara? Yes. Listen. People like Tara, people like Jesse, who are maybe trying to help, even Christina, God bless her, don't know what the hell they're talking about. I want you to know, I want to take your pain away from you. So, you know, you can tell me anything. I know that, Dad. I miss you, sweetie. I know that. I miss you, too. I wish I could have been a better dad and better grandpa, you know? You've been a great dad, and you've been the best grandfather. Don't for a second think otherwise. Well, you know, you... You and Mom have been the best grandparents. Kaylee's been so lucky. Kaylee okay, is well. so lucky to have both of you. You, you. I can't even put into words how glad I am that she's had both of you. And that she still has both of you. You know, it goes without saying, you know, that our, our house is empty without both of you there. It's empty. <sighs> All the little things we took for granted, we miss them so, so much. That's exactly all, how I feel. All your little things and all her little things, it's just, it hurts. And we're, not, we're not there. Mom and I are just going through the motions, you know? I oh, ate coleslaw God. today. Tell him I ate coleslaw. <laughs> well, pro you're probably eating a lot of things you never used to eat before um, because when you're hungry, I, you'll eat. I hated bologna. I've been eating bologna and cheese on occasion. Grits, I don't do grits at all. It's terrible. <laughs> well, you know what? You're going to eat what's in front of you. 
We get another glimpse at Casey's skill in fabricating information and her ability to intertwine specific details to afford her lies some credibility. These minor intricacies are what would make her extremely convincing if we didn't happen to know otherwise. They never searched by her full name. They searched by Zenaida Fernandez, where Zenaida Gonzalez never by her full name. And it's Z E N. Z E N A I D A. I don't think she has a middle name. There was never a middle name on anything that I remember seeing. And I know she went by both last names. She always has since she was younger, since her mom remarried. Flores Gonzalez. You don't know what her stepdad. Fernandez is. Gonzalez. But you don't know what Fernandez Gonzalez. I think her her dad's first name is Victor. Her stepdad, or that could be her real dad. But I remember her saying Victor. Victor. Bro, do you hear how crazy she is at lying? Like, that's mad fucking good, bro. Like that is literally like that sounds real. Bro, that's literally crazy. Like, like little tiny details like that is like. Holy fuck, dude. Oh, that's pathological. That's pathological. Um, but dude, like, where she's like, oh yeah, I think that I think like her father's name was Victor, or or maybe it was the stepdad's name. I don't know, but like yo that sounds real as fuck bro holy shit dude her stepdad i actually need to hear that one more time i think her her dad's first name is victor her stepdad or that could be her real dad but i remember her saying victor victor and so gloria victor, were her parents victor and gloria are her parents but they're separated or divorced they are as of now yeah that was her they're stepdad divorced. but i know she has a lot of money that's where she got the car from I only get one or two um, phone calls a day that, you know, that are not nice phone calls, but yeah. I get many, many, many phone calls and many people reaching out that Good. just believe in you. They believe Good. in us finding Kaylee. Okay? So keep your head up high. But if you think of anything... That I think at this point, like, the, the, the mom and dad, like, it's it's probably like, they just, like, are in denial at this point probably like they're just like no she has to be telling the truth there's no way that our daughter is this much of like a liar like insane like there's no way uh is there a raid what why are people saying raid it's literally no raid I don't know what that is. I don't know how that's like a funny troll. I don't know. All right. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, they gotta be like in denial. They gotta, they gotta just be blindly just trusting her, just hoping that there's just no way that she's this crazy. Oh, don't be afraid. Oh, I won't hesitate to let you guys know. Now you could take it out you of sub mode. Think positive, positive feelings, Casey. Oh, I know. I have been. I've been staying as positive as I can. But do you think after this long, she'd still be local? There's a possibility. What's your gut telling you right now? My you have the telling same... me that she's okay. Okay. And your gut tells you that she's close or some... she's, she's hiding? She's, she's not far. I know in my heart she's not far. I can feel it. This was perhaps the first time Casey told the truth when speaking of her daughter's whereabouts, as she indeed wasn't that far away. Her attorney, Jose Baez, eventually managed to get her bail, and Casey was fitted with an electronic monitoring device and released on August 21st. She had spent just over one month in custody. Two months later, police were granted permission to arrest Casey on the charge of first-degree murder. She was taken in for interrogation, but immediately requested her right to counsel. She was kept in the interview room while awaiting her attorney, and the released footage of that period is so bizarre to the point where it's almost comical. The detectives give off a passive, yet glaringly obvious vibe that lets Casey know exactly what they think. 
being that she is guilty of her daughter's probable death and a fundamentally terrible human being on every imaginable level. Casey's response to this is to essentially ignore it and act as if the discourse between them and the situation itself is an everyday occurrence, one that perhaps doesn't concern the disappearance of her daughter for which she is being charged for. You'll notice that she effortlessly maintains the same confident and talkative disposition that she had in her previous interviews with police. It's almost surreal to watch given the circumstance, and the visual element adds an entire new level to the absurdity. The first segment of footage shows wait, the wait, arresting wait, Chad, I might be lost, but is this after that that little call with the mom? Or is this when she first got arrested, or is this different? This is after? So then she got out after she talked to her mom. How? How the fuck did she get out? Why was she allowed to get out, bro? She got bailed. All right, so this is so this is okay. So this is later. Okay, all right, bet. Officer waiting with Casey for the lead investigator to arrive. He initiates the conversation by bringing up the subject of Casey's parents. He asserts that he's worried about them, but the actual message he's putting across is that he essentially knows Casey is guilty and that she isn't fooling anyone. It's an indirect yet obvious accusation. I was afraid that some of what I said to them probably offended them because I told them that if I find out something that you don't want to hear, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you why. Well, just honestly, because... they'll respect that. That's just, you know, the yeah. type of people that they are in the same way. I know, I know they are. It was never my intention to piss anybody in your family off. Yeah. You know, hey, hold on. I just got to say this because someone just said, uh, Saul Goodman. Listen. Uh, now this goes for anyone in here who ever gets arrested. Um, <coughs> if you get arrested, or if you get just taken in to talk to the cops or anything, right? No matter what it is, you never have to talk to the cops. Like, there, you literally never have to even say one word. Um, and people don't know that. They get tricked. They get finessed. Um... People who aren't even arrested. They come in to talk to the cops. They say, you know, they said something. And now they're under arrest. Um, So listen, yeah, one word is lawyer, yes. Just say I want my lawyer. Don't answer any question. It doesn't matter. If you're guilty or not guilty, you shouldn't answer any questions. Because they could use it against you. I'm not in it to get a conviction. I get nothing out of it. I get zero. Exactly. You have a job you're trying to do. I've, I've know. found a few and I've... And I found a few, and it sucks both ways. Yeah, I agree. So, it is what it is. Yeah. Where I get side, sideways with people. Mm -hmm. She continuously provides these sharp interjections to appear as though she's following what the detectives are saying. People will often do this to express concurrence and understanding. It essentially lets the other person know that you understand them, either intellectually or emotionally. That a point they made makes sense to you, or that you get why they feel a certain way about something. The only problem here is that Casey's verbal reciprocation at times makes no sense whatsoever. What's fascinating is that this would go unnoticed in an everyday setting. When recorded on film, however, and able to be studied and scrutinized, it becomes far more distinctive. Where I get side sideways with people mm -hmm. tends to be when attorneys get involved. I've heard most people say that. They don't like attorneys very much. <laughs> I, have, I have many family members that are attorneys. I have no problems with attorneys. What I have problems with are, at some point, mm -hmm. we have to set aside the rules, and we have to fight kids. And you know what? So be it. That's why I told you in the car. You know, if you tell me anything now, yeah. I'll get up and say, yep, I heard it, and you'd already <laughs> invoked it. We can't use any of it. That's just the way it is. That's all that matters to me. Yeah. The detective here has essentially just asked Casey for the information he knows she has about her missing child. Rather than retaliate and refute the blatant accusation, Casey continues with her sharp responses of accordance as if to say she agrees and knows exactly where the detective is coming from. Yet although she apparently agrees, she offers no information or follow-up dialogue thereafter. It's so incredibly awkward, yet equally intriguing to watch. 
And, uh, you know, when we did did the, another case that I was involved in, you know, they, they lost a confession. And I sat there and I looked right at the guys that we worked with. I said, That's not what's important. Who cares? Yeah. We found her. We found her and he's going to get what is coming to him. That's not my job. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it works out in the end. And it works out in the end on all sides, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. It may not be comfortable for everybody. Yeah. And there's, I've done things that if I get caught for, I'm not <laughs> going to be comfortable, I can tell you that. It's just the way life is. You know, but it's not the end of the road either. And that's what we have to keep in mind. It's not the end of the road. Casey then casually brings up the topic of the grand jury and the media surrounding her murder trial. She raises the questions as if she's talking about her favorite daytime TV show. Yeah, I but, know. If it, but if the subpoena itself yeah. is just a regular federal yeah, murder, grand jury subpoena, that's public, public records. Yeah. It doesn't say what it's for. It doesn't say what case it's in. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It just says you're subpoenaed to appear before the grand jury. Well, with them announcing that you know there was going to be a grand jury. Yo, Los, is this a VOD? Dude, why the fuck are people saying this is pre-recorded, bro? Say the most random shit that you could ever even think of right now in the chat. Just say it. Just say it. Or sub, and I'll read it. Just go ahead. Fart balls? Fart balls. Dude, there's no way that you're over 12. There's no way that a 13 plus year old would say fart balls. No one would say that. Evan, 51 months, thank you. Myrna, four months, thank you. Vagina penis. All right, no, now I know, okay. Okay, is it proven? Is it proven? Let's go, dude. People, people like think this is biology class. Your vagina penis, dude. Who says vagina? All right, let's go. It just says you're subpoenaed to appear before the grand jury. Well, with them announcing that you know there was going to be a grand jury, and obviously my name was thrown out, they knew mm. who the grand jury was for. Who threw your name out? All of the media said that it was from an inside source meeting in here. So that's where they all see it. I can tell you what I think of the media and what I think of people who leaked stuff to the media. I think it's garbage. Yeah. But I agree. <laughs> that's the next that doesn't, that it, doesn't yeah. make it any less necessary without them. Mm -hmm. She's so accustomed to giving these ungenuine responses at every given opportunity that she doesn't even know where to place them correctly. This response should have been given two seconds earlier when the detective finished his declamation, not when he started a new sentence. It's so incredibly aggravating to watch. I'll be quite honest, without the media, we don't find a quarter of the kids that we... Oh, I agree. Really it find. helps. The exposure has helped bring in so many tips for my daughter. But. At the same time, what, mm -hmm. it re what it creates is it creates a monster that otherwise isn't necessary. Exactly. Uh, the tips are what the tips are. Mm -hmm. If it was a local media only, mm -hmm. it would be much easier to work. Yeah. Dude, what it. is the, is this supposed to be an interrogation? Like, this just looks like a casual conversation. Like, what is this? She just got arrested and she's like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's. Oh, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, this is weird as fuck, dude. They're waiting for the lawyer to come. Oh, okay. Get the national media. Then you come up you with... You get the Nancy Graces. Well, you, get the, well you get the tips also mm -hmm. that come from Hawaii that say, I saw Kaylee. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, let me call no, Hawaii. Let from me send Georgia them out. Let me do and that. The ones that are a little bit closer. Th those are, those are what I consider local. Because the, yeah. the local it's stations are going to cover that. That's, yeah. that's contiguous to the state of Florida. That's not. When people are only getting their information from the Nancy Graces or from Globe magazine or People or, you know, stuff like that. Are you kidding me? You're not going to break bad, right? No. All right. 
We're going to call him on my cell phone. Okay. I know this is... Oh, yeah, that's not good. Pull it back there. <laughs> Just slide your hand out. No, I, I, I honestly this. can't. So they're a little tight. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for entertaining us. Just slide your hand out. Corporal Edwards. <laughs> Actually, if I could, I would have done that for you. Do you know Bai has his phone right. number off the top of your head? No, I do not. How, how can we get his cell number or his number? Um, I know his office number. What is that? Four zero seven. I've identified myself. You know why you're in custody. Yes. Um, and you have you signed this. You want your attorney present? Yes. Hey, it's Casey. Um, I'm with Corporal. Corporal Edwards. Edwards. I know the last name, sorry. Um, I'm at the Sheriff's Department if you'd like to come down and meet with us. Thank you. Yes. And to answer your other question um, from that picture, I cut my hair. It was really short even last year. I just started growing it. All back. right. I don't know what's going on in the chat. I don't know. This video, at no point should you say, oh, I've seen this before. I've seen this on the hub. Seen this on Pornhub. That, like, this is a murderer. Okay? This is a murderer. You gotta know when and when not to be like, oh. Like, I need that. Like, like, <clears throat> like I'm not even gonna make a joke out of this. From that picture, I cut my hair. It was really short, even last year. I just started growing it back out this year, so. Just about that. Okay. <laughs> it's been a long day. It has been. How was my dad this morning? Um, he had a hard time. Yeah. Honestly. I only saw from the media and got a chance to hear him talking to my mom. I spoke to him last night and this morning for just... A quick second before you left, so. Yeah, I talked to him this morning for a little bit. Uh, he was with Mark, and, you know, he was really struggling. I mean, you can imagine. Is this the lawyer? Uh, you know, he was being called in to, to essentially provide testimony to indict you. No. At least. And he was really struggling with that. Yeah. And, uh, and I felt bad for him, to be honest with you. I truly did. Well, I haven't told him last night. I know he was subpoenaed, and... Under the law, he had to answer whatever questions were asked, and they told him to do what he had to do. Imagine you were Casey, but void of any wrongdoing whatsoever. Your daughter was kidnapped five weeks ago, and now a detective who thinks you're the culprit is relaying the agonizing moments of your father providing information for your arrest. No matter how stoic or self-controlled your nature, you would most likely be in tears or completely enraged at the overwhelming unjustness of the situation. You anxious about today? Um, I have been. I mean, this is something, honestly, we've been preparing for from the beginning just because of words that were directly spoken from Yuri Malich and also from uh, Sergeant Allen. They were saying that this is what they were planning on doing from the very beginning, from that first day. So they wrote me off within the first couple hours. That was the only time they ever made any effort to try to talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. And no, it was kind of difficult. That was kind of difficult considering. Well, considering, um, obviously, in light of everything that's going on and the fact yeah. that you've been arrested for other things, it makes it a little more difficult to sit down and even talk to you. Mm -hmm. It's not that we haven't wanted to. Yeah. Um, but certainly. I do have counsel, and that's something that, you know, my attorney's always been a phone call away. Has, you, has your attorney ever told you that we would like to speak to you? And we had agreed, him and I together, that we would all sit down together, him and I, and you guys, and, you know, we entertain whatever questions you have and there is no possible way that a defense attorney would actually sit down and, as Casey states, entertain any question the police have for them. Yet if we weren't paying close attention, we would take her at her word due to the eloquence of her dialogue and not realize everything she's saying is complete nonsense. I actually thought that we made it pretty clear mm -hmm. that, you know, we wanted to talk to you. I mean, obviously, we can't come to you and ask you. Yeah, but, understandably. You know. I thought that you were aware that if you'd wanted to talk to, to anybody, mm -hmm. that all you got to do was simply ask. Yeah, well, I know it goes both ways on that, and I guess it would have needed to come from me. I should have been the one to, I guess, come forward with it. But, you know, we did open up that door to law enforcement before. 
when Sergeant Allen is making a big deal saying, well, we want to talk to her. When can we talk to her? And he's saying, well, the door's open. <clears throat> I don't believe he ever told us the door's open. What's fascinating is how instinctive and confident her assertions are. In any other circumstance, or even without the knowledge we have now, you would have no reason not to believe everything she's saying. I've heard the words come out of his mouth, even myself, directed to other people that maybe didn't either relay the message or took it a different way, so I don't know. I think the lack of communication has put people in opposite corners when everybody has the same goal is to find Kaylee. We all still feel, I as a mom, I know in my gut there's the feeling as a parent, you know certain things about your child, you can feel that connection. And I still have that feeling, that presence, I know that she's alive. Whether you have a bucket load of evidence downstairs that contradicts that and says otherwise, or all you have is speculation. Or, or nothing at all. I mean, we have more than speculation. As every tip and, and that's every that lead follow up. Directly. Yeah. That we have more than speculation. We have a lot. Or else we wouldn't be to this point. Mm -hmm. A lot. This was essentially a direct confrontation. The detective has just told Casey they have sufficient evidence to prove her guilt. Casey doesn't refute or even respond to the accusation. She instead falls back to her ridiculous dialogue once again, hoping the confidence in her voice will mask the absurdity of what she's actually saying. Well, I've said, I've said the same thing to them. That, you know, they said that we're at the end of a hallway, and I'm thinking we're at the end of a hallway and there's two doors. Which door are we going to go through? Or I guess this is, you know, we're at this point, and... We are at this point. We're the, well the final beyond. step is which door is locked. We are well beyond where we were before. Mm -hmm. I mean, those, those issues are gone, okay? And when we refer to we're at the end of the hallway, I think you were know, we, we well aware of what hallway we're talking about. Do you understand that? Um, well, so there's no question, I guess. You can specify that at this point, or what your perspective is on that. You have a second? Absolutely. Can we come right back? Yeah, that's fine. You plan on running off? I'm not going anywhere. I think I'll scratch out a little bit. I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> it's unfortunate that right when the pressure was starting to build, the second detective interrupts the exchange and they both leave the room soon after. Casey waits alone for roughly 40 minutes before her attorney shows up. He's going to ask you a question. You okay. don't say anything else other than the answer. Okay? Casey, based on our conversation today, and I read you that form, mm -hmm. basically just the same thing I said to Mr. Baez over the phone. If there have been numerous requests or, or requests or opportunities, requests for opportunities to speak with us and come to a resolution here. And that's why we brought you here instead of the jail. Correct? Yes. Okay. Now, based on your request for us to call him and bring him here, he's here. So what we're going to try to do is give you a few minutes somewhere that's not recorded. No secrets, I told you. This room's recorded. I have to be able to approach my chain and explain why. The detective now guilefully takes Casey up on her previous offer, where she insisted they were willing to sit down with police and answer questions. But first, I needed you to tell him, in your own words, if you will, that you'd like to take the opportunity to deal with us like you made that request in the past. So, uh, is that something you want to tell him? I told him the same thing we talked about before, that we would entertain any questions that they have. We would listen and discuss it, and if we have something to respond, we'll respond. Okay, do you want to speak to me in private yes. so we can clarify this? Yes. It would come as no surprise that no conference was to be had. Casey was instead taken to the county jail, where she would remain for two and a half years awaiting trial. Once this footage was released to the public domain, the consensus was that Casey at best was a cold-hearted mother, and at worst, a hideous, despicable murderer. But what's curious is that although these opinions may be accurate, they came from a completely misguided notion, being that her behavior in the footage was entirely genuine. Casey was in all likelihood being completely fake this entire time. So you might be curious as to why a person would actually fake such a poised temperament, when it would be far more fitting to fake sadness and despair. 
We all have aspects to ourselves that are ungenuine to a certain degree. How we act at a business dinner won't be the way we are at home with our close friends or family. The more comfortable the setting, the more we can be ourselves. Those educated on Casey's past would assert that she was rarely sad, rarely angry, but always this bubbly and agreeable personality, even when it didn't suit the situation. She was one of those people where something just seemed- okay, at this point, yeah, go sub mode and time people. I don't know what this is. I don't even know how that's even- I don't- I, like, I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words right now. I We're literally watching something about a mom that potentially murdered her daughter. And you're saying cock. Just think about that. And off, but you couldn't quite put your finger on it. The evidence put forward suggests that Casey was fake in every single setting and with every single person all of the time. A trait that might go unnoticed in everyday life, yet would clearly stand out when shown under the microscope of a criminal case study. Casey had become so accustomed to this fraudulent way of being that it even came as a natural behavior to her in the extraordinary setting we see here. And the assertion is that because Casey knew just how well she could fabricate this character, she thought she could use it to mask her anxiety and thus conceal guilty behavior. Casey, in all likelihood, had little to no regard for her daughter. That's not even an argument anymore. But her true temperament here would likely be far more apprehensive due to the concern over her own welfare. Every time the detective insinuated an accusation, Casey kept the same tone, same demeanor, and same confident, light-hearted disposition. If you took her out of this interrogative setting and placed her in the mall with her friends, it would seem completely normal. She would be faking her personality in both environments, yet we are only able to realize it in one. This type of mindset is linked to sociopathy. Whatever the situation or circumstance, they need to have an advantage over you. So how do they do this? They lie, and also calculate how they are going to feel and react to a certain situation before it occurs. The entirety of her focus was on making herself look good rather than being worried about the actual quality of her character. Casey, in a nutshell, was an inauthentic person, long before she ever gave birth to her ill-fated daughter. And her skill at deception alongside her manufactured personality is arguably the most terrifying part of this entire case. On December 11th, 2008, just under five months since she was reported missing, Kaylee's skeletal remains were discovered in a swamp less than a mile away from the Anthony household. She was wrapped in a Winnie the Pooh blanket and then placed in a canvas laundry bag. <sighs> Chat, you know that like thing that like everyone does? This, that like fake, like uh, nice shit that you do sometimes like in public, like if you're like, let's say you're talking to like anyone or like even like a doctor, like you're just in like a setting where you're talking to somebody and it's not like your friend or family. It's just like, it's kind of like a small talk kind of fake thing. Like, oh, how's the weather? Like, oh yeah, I heard it was good. Like, you know what I mean? You know how like weird that feels to do that, right? Imagine doing that and that's your whole life. Like, imagine that you have to talk like that forever. Like, you can't just, like, just talk normal and just, and just, like, you know, whatever. Like, you're just, like, stuck in this, like, small talk, like, fake way of speaking. It's, like, you literally have to, like, just be psychotic. Like, there's no way around this, bro. Let me rewind this. Everyone's saying RIP. I didn't hear what he said right here. On December 11th, 2008, just under five months since she was reported missing, Kaylee's skeletal remains were discovered in a swamp less than a mile away from the Anthony household. Wow. She was wrapped in a Winnie the Pooh blanket and then placed in a canvas laundry bag. Duct tape was discovered around the nose and mouth area of the skull, and her death was ruled a homicide. Prosecutors in the case then announced they would be seeking the death penalty. There were a multitude of discoveries made in the lead up to the trial, and many believed it to be an open and shut case due to the damnatory nature of the evidence. On the last day Kaylee was seen alive by anyone other than her mother, and the day many believed she was murdered, Casey Anthony made the following internet searches.
At 7.54 p.m. that same evening, Casey and her boyfriend Tony were seen in a blockbuster video store. Kaylee was nowhere in sight, and many presume she was already dead and decomposing in Casey's trunk at this point. In the following weeks, Casey went out partying most nights. Just three days after her daughter's supposed abduction, she was captured in various photos participating in a hot body contest. Twelve days after, she got a tattoo on her back saying, Bella Vita, an Italian motto that translates, Beautiful Life. She also made an entry in her diary around the same time which read, I completely trust my own judgment and I knew that I made the right decision. This is the happiest that I have been in a very long time. I hope that my happiness will continue to grow. The trial commenced on May 24, 2011. The gist of the prosecution's argument was that Casey suffocated her daughter with duct tape and then placed her in the trunk for a few days before disposing of her body in the swamp. The motive for the murder was the primary focus during their opening statement. This isn't just a case about Casey, Marie Anthony. It's a story about Kaylee Anthony as well. Kaylee Anthony was born on August 9th of 2005. It was a Tuesday. And Kaylee lived nearly every day of her life on a quiet residential street in Orlando called Hope Spring Drive. Casey Anthony, Kaylee's mother, appeared to all outward observers to be what her parents thought she was, a loving mother working hard to provide support for her daughter. But as the evidence in this case and the investigation into the background of Casey Anthony will show, that was an illusion. On Monday, June 16th, Cindy Anthony goes to work, as I've described, sometime between 7 and 8 a.m., and is out of the house until the late evening. George Anthony specifically recalls that at 12.50 p.m. on June 16th of 2008, his daughter, Casey, left the residence on Hope Spring Drive with Kaylee Marie Anthony. Kaylee was wearing a pink shirt, jean shorts, sunglasses, and a backpack. And JoJo, George Anthony, kissed his granddaughter goodbye. I never saw that again. In fact, no one but Casey Anthony ever saw Kaylee Marie Anthony alive again. The evidence in this case will establish that there is no other reason for the placement of multiple pieces of duct tape on this child's face, mouth, and nose other than the specific intent to end that child's life. No one but Casey Anthony had access to all the pieces of evidence in this case. The duct tape, the laundry bag, the blanket, the shorts, the shirt, the car. No one else lied to their friends, to their family, to investigators. No one else benefited from the death of Kaylee Marie Anthony. Kaylee's death allowed Casey Anthony to live the good life, at least for those 31 days. Although there was a lack of direct physical evidence tying the defendant to her daughter's death, the evidence the state actually had still seemed overwhelming, and they understandably thought relying on the facts alone would easily secure a conviction. The defense, on the other hand, were up against it. So not only did they use charm and appeal to sway the jury's attention away from the evidence, they dropped an absolute bombshell in their opening statements to create as much doubt as humanly possible. On behalf of the defense, I want to thank you for the sacrifice that you've made in your jury service and coming here and helping us see justice. 
We know it's no easy task. And we intend, I'm sure both sides, on getting you home as quickly as possible once you have all of the information that you need. Everyone wants to know what happened. How in the world can a mother wait 30 days before ever reporting her child missing? It's insane. It's bizarre. Something's just not right about that. Well, the answer is actually relatively simple. She never was missing. Kaylee Anthony died on June 16, 2008, when she drowned in her family's swimming pool. Well, the reason we're all here is because not of the commonality of this tragedy, but of the uniqueness of the family that it happened to. You will hear about ugly things, secret things, things that people don't speak about, things that Casey never spoke about. <clears throat> On June 16, 2008, after Kaylee died, Casey did what she's been doing all her life, or for most of it, hiding her pain, going into that dark corner and pretending that she does not live in, in the situation that she's living in. This family must keep its secrets quiet. And it all began when Casey was eight years old and her father came into her room and began to touch her inappropriately. This child, who was at eight years old, learned to lie immediately. She could be 13 years old, have her father's penis in her mouth, and then go to school and play with the other kids as if nothing ever happened. That will help you understand why no one knew that her child was dead. The trial would go on to last six weeks, with the prosecution exposing the truly dark and deceptive nature of Casey's character. While the state relied on fact, the defense clung on to theory and proposed every conspiracy under the sun in the hope they would create enough skepticism and confusion. One of the more noted details of the trial was the courtroom presence of Jose Baez. He had an exceptional ability of narrative control and storytelling, and his capacity to create a connection with the jury seemed far more adequate than that of the state. This was recognized and mentioned multiple times in the media, yet the overwhelming majority of those following the case were almost certain that it wouldn't be enough to save the defendant. Closing arguments were put forward on Sunday the 3rd of July. When you have a child, that child becomes your life. <clears throat> This case is about the clash between that responsibility and the expectations that go with it and the life that Casey Anthony wanted to have. Casey meets Tony. Tony has this life. He's free. He's a club promoter. He's out there at night with the loud music and dancing, and it's a great free life. So she has a choice. A life tethered to a child or a life free to be 22. And as hard as it is for anyone to imagine she had to choose between two, sacrificing two things. The first was her dreams and the life she wanted. And the second was her child. And we submit to you the evidence in this case shows that the choice she made was her child. Here we are at the end of our journey. <clears throat> and I have to tell you that I probably think you have more questions than you have answers. And if you recall, at opening statements, the first, the final thing that I told you, at the end of the day, when everything is said and done, the one question will never be answered. The key question in this case will never be answered. It can never be proven. And that is, how did Kaylee die? I'm going to start with my biggest fear. I'm going to tell you right up front what I fear may happen in this case. And I want to talk to you about it and explain why I feel that way. This case deals with so much emotion. 
I know that there were times where every single person in here felt something deep down inside. Your rules of deliberation, what the law is, is that this case must not be decided for or against anyone because you feel sorry for anyone or are angry at anyone. You'll notice that Mr. Baez locks the jury's focus on this while subtly concealing this. He presents the argument that the prosecution has purposely got the jury emotionally invested in the case in the hope it would push them towards a guilty verdict. Yet in this exact same statement, he himself is getting them emotionally invested for the exact opposite reason. While refuting the prosecution's supposed attempt to entice anger, he subtly attempts to evoke empathy. Say what you want about this attorney and the ethics of his conduct, but what you are about to witness is expertly done, and what many believe to be what saved Casey Anthony's life. And that's because, obviously, we want you to base your verdict on the evidence, not on emotion. And it's my biggest fear because it's such a difficult thing for you to push aside. Kaylee Anthony was a beautiful, sweet, innocent child who died far too soon. There's no doubt about it, and that is not disputed by anyone. But to parade her up here to invoke your emotion would be improper. It's improper under the law, and it's improper as to the rules of your deliberation. He went on for a great length of time talking about this beautiful child. Not on his evidence, not on the evidence that was presented before you. It was to set up the emotion for what was to come. And that is exactly how this case was presented. You, they didn't come right out the gate and show you the evidence. They gave you two weeks of testimony that was completely irrelevant and served only one purpose. And that was to paint Casey Anthony as a slut, as a party girl, as a girl who lies, and has absolutely nothing to do with how Kaylee died. And this prosecution was geared in such a manner that it was deliberate, it was methodical, it was thorough, and it was detailed. Mr. Baez then focuses on the fact that the state has the burden of proof. This guy's fucking good as shit, dude. Holy fuck. <clears throat> this kind of shit makes me wish I was a lawyer. Chat, you think I'd be a good lawyer? Be honest. <clears throat> I could persuade, dude. Thing is, you don't even know when I'm doing it. You don't even know when I'm doing it. Hell nah. The thing is, everyone who's saying hell nah, you would all, every one of you, you would want me on your side if this was a case. You would want me on your side. I don't think you trust anyone else to speak on your behalf. I don't think you would. If I was a classically trained lawyer, of course. <clears throat> but I think I could do this without without any law school, to be honest. I think I could actually give this a shot. Have you guys seen My Cousin Vinny? Let me do that for one of you. All right, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Detailed. Mr. Baez then focuses on the fact that the state has the burden of proof and thereafter continues to intertwine the two essential features of his argument, empathy and doubt. Don't speculate. Don't guess. It has to be proven to you beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt. If you don't know what happened, it wasn't proven. We don't want you to tell us what you think happened. We want you to tell us what was proven happened. And that's the difference here. Because you know what? We can go on and speculate why you have the duct tape? all day long as to the different theories that were posed before you, as to the different possibilities. But the truth of the matter is, is it must be what was proven. There are no mysteries to solve here. There should be no mystery before you right now. If you have questions, then it was not proven. And that's as simple as it goes. Now, 
back to what I was saying with their initial setup, the way the case was presented the first couple of weeks. You see, the strategy behind that is, is if you hate her, if you think she's a lying, no good slut, then you'll start to look at this evidence in a different light. You'll start to, oh, wait a minute. Maybe I, I'm seeing something that's not there. And start to actually discriminate against her rather than give her the standard that is afforded to each and every citizen in our country. And that is that the state, that the government come in here and prove their case <coughs> beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt. But you can get away with that if we can get a jury to hate her. But you're here to fulfill an oath. You've labored tremendously over this journey. And we're going to ask you to render a verdict of not guilty on these charges because they simply were not proven. And they're simply not true. For the Ninth Judicial Circuit in and for Orange County, Florida, State of Florida versus Casey Marie Anthony. As to case number 2008, CF 15606-0. As to the charge of first degree murder, verdict as to count one, we the jury find the defendant not guilty, so say we all, dated at Orlando, Orange County, Florida, on this fifth day of July, 2011, signed four person. As to the charge of aggravated child abuse, verdict as to count two, we the jury find the defendant not guilty, so say we all, dated at Orlando, Orange County, Florida, this fifth day of July, 2011, signed four person. As to the charge of aggravated manslaughter of a child, verdict is to count three. We, the jury, find the defendant not guilty. So say we all, dated at Orlando, Orange County, Florida, this fifth day of July, 2011, signed four person. And juror number 12, were these your two incorrect verdicts? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Will uh, counsel and the defendant approach the podium? Well, I hope uh, that this is a lesson to those of you who have been indulged in media assassination for three years, with bias and prejudice and incompetent talking heads saying what would be and how to be. Uh, I'm, I'm disgusted by some of the lawyers that have done this. And uh, I can tell you that my colleagues from coast to coast and border to border have condemned this whole process of lawyers getting on television and talking about cases that they don't know a damn thing about and don't have the experience to back up their words or the law to do it. Now you've learned a lesson. And we appreciate the jury, those of you that have been objective and professional, we like it. Others, we're gonna be talking to again. Thank you very much. Casey did not murder Kaylee. It's that simple. And today, our system of justice has not dishonored her memory by a false conviction. I mean, what could you even say right now? I don't know how this is. I don't know how this is possible. I I, I literally don't know how this is possible, bro. Actual about this Casey Anthony thing. I didn't know anything about it. Um. <sighs> yeah, there's no evidence. And there's no confession. Dude, what is this thing on my eye? Ow! I don't know. They probably were like... They probably said that she was watching a documentary or something. I mean, if I was a lawyer, that's what I would come up with. Oh, no, she was watching a documentary at the time. And she just... You know, when you're watching a show, you just want to see, like... Is that possible? Like, easy to cover shit up like that
It's a sty? The hell's an what is a sty? Uh, 